Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the second video on strings. So we revised a little bit last time and then this time we're going to go ahead and uh, take a look at some different methods that you can use with strings. Now, I've mentioned this before, but a method is part of object-oriented programming and means we use the dot. Okay, operator. So you don't you don't care what object-oriented programming is right now. All you need to know is that a method, whenever you're using a method, you have to put the dot after the variable name and then access the method. And a method for for your benefit, just think of a method as a function, just like you've been using functions before. Functions like range and length and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at an example. And the first one we're going to do is count. And count, so if you notice, variable, period, method. Okay, And count takes one parameter that is any length string. It could be any, anything you want and you test how many things match this inside the string. So if I run this, I get two because there's an E and an E there. So there's two E's. If I put a G, you get a one because only one G. If you put an NG, you get a one. If you put a space, you get two because I got a space here and a space here. So count is just counting how many times something shows up in that string. So that's one for actual the word string. So count can be pretty useful when you want to maybe do some analysis on a string and calculate how many vowels or something are in there. So you can go ahead and uh, use this in order to do that. Uh, the next thing I'll, I want to show you here is uh, find. Okay, so find, what it does is it works kind of like count in that it searches through the string for something that you give it, for example, an E. But instead of counting how many things there are, returning a number, it tells you an index of where the first one of those things are. So if I say E, okay, so if I say E, that's going to give me this. So what it should do is it should say 0, 1, and give us index 1. I run it, I get index 1. If I put a capital S, it would tell me index 5. Now if I actually put string, it still tells me index 5 because the capital S starts at index 5. So the string starts at index 5. If you put capital O, you get index 12 and so on. Now you notice though if I put E, it only finds the first one, not the second one. Okay, so find works pretty well uh, for finding one of the things. Now, there's other methods for finding multiple indexes, but we're not going to talk about that this time. We're just going to look at uh, the, the simple find method. Okay, now let's say that you got the idea. You say, well, I want to find this variable, or find this uh, letter, rather, and then I want to change it to be something else. So let's say you try to do that. So you say, all right, well, I'm going to find the index. So I say string one dot find E, and then you print out the index. Okay, so I, I run this, and that gives me one, exactly what I wanted. Delete the first one there. Now I say, oh, I'm going to use that index, and I'm going to change the first E to be something else. So you say, okay, well, I'll do string, and I can access this, access this just like I learned in the last tutorial. And I'm going to change it to be a 3 instead of an E. And you try this. And you, f you say that, uh, whoop, sorry, string 1, not STRS. It says, type error, string object does not support item assignment. Well, what does that mean? It means that strings, like a tuple, are immutable. Meaning once you make a string, you can't actually change it. So once you create this variable, you can't change it. You can reassign it. You can say string one is equal to uh, test string blah. And this is okay. You could redo it like this, but you can't make an individual element from the string change value. 
So if you want to change this to a three, you would actually have to create a whole new string str2. So what you would do is you would have to use some sort of list division. So I'm going to show you a, another way to do this here is you're going to have to break this list into two pieces. You're going to have to break it into this and you have to break it into this and you're going to have to change that and then put it all back together into a new list. So how can you access just part of, or sorry, ac return it back into the a string, not list? How do, you, how do you access part of a string? Well, this isn't a function, but it's also very, very useful. And we're going to use it in a couple examples uh, in this video and the next video. So let's say that uh, you want to access just part of the string. So I want to, just to get the first character of string one, I could do this, okay? And this will print a T. And we've seen this before with list. What this says is start at the beginning, and I can put a zero here too, it's fine. And it go up to the, up to index one, not including index one. So this goes from here and takes this. If you want to get all the way the, to the end of test, you need to go here. So this will take all of test. If I wanted just that last T right here, you do three to four. And this is called splicing, which we've talked about with list. You can splice a list. And just like you can splice a list, you can splice a string. So that's pretty useful because what you could then do is you could change this character here using the splicing. So for example, if I want to make string three and I want to change that, I can do str1 zero to one plus three plus uh, str one and then you skip over this thing here okay so you're gonna go from two and then you just leave this blank and it will take all the rest of the string when you leave that blank blank so that just says go to the end of the string and if you print str three you're gonna get test string one, but it now has an E instead of that. Now this might seem like a whole bunch of trouble to do this, but in actuality, making strings immutable really is a very important. In the same way that you make tuples immutable, it saves you a lot of time and it saves the computer a lot of energy from uh, having to do extra calculations when it comes to strings. Meaning, if you didn't make strings immutable, the computer or the compiler, the interpreter in our case, has to make extra room in memory for a string that might be longer than it originally was planned for. But when it can plan that a string is going to be this long and always be this long, then it can plan that amount of memory uh, to always be used for that. It doesn't have to make extra room or adjust things because of it. So it's important that strings are immutable and even though this seems like a little more work, it's actually not too bad. You can later go on and you can make functions and use functions that will replace certain things in here. Okay, so just just keep in mind splicing works just the same. So let's look at some other things and uh, some other methods that we might want to use. Uh, some probably three, yeah, probably probably three of the most important are upper, lower, and split. Upper is pretty nice and lower are pretty nice because when you're doing things like pattern matching, it actually does help you quite a bit, if case doesn't matter. So upper and lower are, are very easy. Uh, so if I say string lower, it will take all the characters and make them all lower. And if I say string upper, it makes all the characters uppercase. Okay, so upper and lower, there's nothing special about them, it just changes case up or down. Now, obviously if I put numbers in here, it's not going to change those no matter what I do. Okay, so it just ignores numbers. It only pays attention to letters being upper and lower case. All right, now, the last thing I want to show you is by far the most important thing whenever you're manipulating strings. And you will probably use this method anytime you're doing string manipulation. And I've saved it for last for that specific reason. 
and that is the split method. Split is if you want to break apart text into individual pieces, you can use the, the split method to do it. So I'm going to say split string one is equal to str one dot split. And if I do this and run this, it splits it all of the words out of it. Now, here you're saying, why? Well, there's nothing's in here. How did it know to split this? Well, the default is to split something based on a, a blank space. So if there's a blank space, it'll split stuff. So if I run this, notice it doesn't care how many blank spaces there are. It's still going to take all the blank spaces out and just take all the words that are there. So it will also take numbers, it takes anything. If you have anything there at all, it'll take those as long as they're together and they're not spaces. All right, so split is very, 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 very useful. Uh, you can also split on other things though. For example, if you wanted to split on E, if I did this, it would split here. It would then take the E out and then goes all the way up to here and then splits on this E and then it takes everything after that. And notice this time, the blank spaces are all there, all the all the, what we call white space or just a, a space bar or whatever you want to call it. So all those blanks are all there. So you can split on anything you want at all. Uh, maybe you get some text that is test string dot uh, more stuff. Uh, I like mangoes new line. Yes. Okay, so maybe you get something like this and you want to split on a new line, you can do that as well. So splitting on a new line would give you this, it splits on a new line. So if you, for example, you read in a whole file and the file has a whole bunch of new line characters, you could split the, the whole text on each line. And then each line, you could then take each line and split it on the words. Or you could split the whole thing on words, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so uh, in this case, uh, split is super important. You can split on new lines, you can split on anything you want at all. So when we get to using files and other things, we're going to come back and we're going to use split a whole bunch. And in, in the file stuff, I'm actually going to show you another one uh, called strip. And strip uh, takes off characters at the very end, like new line characters and other stuff. But I'm not going to do that here. I'll, I'll wait till the uh, the file section in order to do that. It's not as important in this in this part. Okay, thanks for watching. If you have questions, leave them in the comments or uh, on the website. Comments on YouTube or comments on the website. All right, thanks for watching. See you soon.